Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we have the JG Aurora JG Maker Magic from JG Aurora, I believe. This is available on Amazon. I have a link down below for you to check it out. Stay tuned while we open this up and see what it's all about. Alrighty, inside the box we have the base of the printer itself. So this is your base unit, 24 volt power supply, it is protected, so you don't have to worry about exposure to mains power. It is a custom board made specifically for this machine. It says magic on the board, integrated driver, so you can't replace the drivers, but there are standard plugs, so if need be, TL smoothers and stepper dampers shouldn't be a problem. I don't know if it needs it or not. You're using um, smooth rod rails for the bed, and you are using V-slot wheels and rails for the rest of the structure. Um, it looks like they are using a fiber plate, which I actually like. So you have that fiberboard plate with a skin on it. So you clamp that down with your little clips or tape it down if you want. But when you're done, you can pop it off and give it a flex. And that makes for moving things much, much easier. Your hot end is also fascinating. I like this a lot. I've seen this before with JG Aurora printers and I like it. Where they have a daughter board here, a breakout board on the hot end. So you can see that there. And all of these components, your heater cartridge, your thermistor, and your fan all plug into sockets on the board. So you can unplug a component and replace a component without having to run the wire all the way back to the printer. And then there is a primary wire here that you plug in that runs to the printer. That's nice, I like that a lot. Standard Creality style affair for the hot end. You've got a cooling fan here, parts cooling fan here. It is a plastic fan duct that is molded. So that is actually a nicely molded blower unit there. I like that. This is your carriage assembly. So these two parts make up your carriage for your printer. That's going to be your Z and X carriage here. Standard stepper motors, no issues. Nothing jumps out at me as weird. Nice strong thick metal. I do like that they're using pretty beefy hardware and hammer nuts to attach this so you can really crank that down without fear of stripping it. And if you do strip it, it's just a hammer nut. Replace it. Uh, here is your extruder assembly. This is your feeder unit. It does look like it has minimal guidance, so this will handle like a really stiff TPU or a soft PETG, but this will not handle um, ultra flexibles. Uh, not unless that PTFE tube is able to go all the way in, which it does not look like it is. So this will not be super compatible with flexibles. It'll handle your hard flexibles, but it's not going to handle your soft stuff. Uh, your z-axis stepper with a nice clamp coupler instead of a um, spiral cut coupler which i don't like i like the clamp couplers better and your goodie bag with all your stuff in it, your usb cable your wires your memory cards your extra bolts your idler pulleys etc so we're going to get into the assembly this is basically going to build like an end of three the base is basically assembled and you will attach your um, frame to the machine and your spool holder to the frame <laughs> so here's your rails to build the rest of the printer so you're going to have your two vertical rails and your top brace and your x arm rail which everything else will attach to and we will get to that so stay tuned alrighty so inside your goodie bag you get filament detection switch your um, z end stop and you get all your miscellaneous bolts and hardware to assemble the printer they are all very nicely marked so they are labeled and they tell you what they are, which is nice. Little tools, um, your bed rail components. I already showed you the rest of the components before. I also love the fact that they actually include a legitimate print removal tool. I mean, that's actually, a, I would consider that a legit tool. I like that. I don't know if it's full tang. It's probably not. I imagine it's probably that deep. It'd be nice if it was full tang. I can maybe test that. Yeah, about what I thought. It goes down to here. So hold it up here when you're using it. If you hold it back here, you're probably gonna break this handle, but hold it up here and you should be good. And um, because it goes down to about, oh, right about here. So it goes down about that far, but nice. I like, the, I like to see that they're improving the tools they include. This is much safer and better than a freaking scraper spatula thing that'll just cut your hand open. So stay tuned. All right, the main assembly is put together. Uh, the M525s, the long black bolts, bolt these two verticals into the side of the frame. Um, it seems to work, no problem so far. 
I don't see any forward and back play in here. Um, the assembly here, these two pieces, this is the opposite of most printers. This is on the right hand side instead of the left hand side like we're used to, so be sure to remember that these are backwards. Um, the hammer nuts don't fully fit, they only turn about 60 degrees, they don't turn the full 90 degrees. Um, they work, they lock in tight, but I would like them to turn all the way, so I would like to see you use the correct hammer nuts for this, or explain why they're different. Um, the watch out for the bend in this arm here. You gotta make sure this arm is adjusted to the right angle so that when you bring it down, it sits pretty level with your bed. Um, all I had to do was hold it here and push this down until it sat in the right spot, and it did. It does seem to move freely, no major issues. Um, a little tighter than I would like, but I can't adjust that because there's no eccentrics, but I don't think it's tight enough to cause a problem. Now, what I didn't like is the fact that these actually didn't line up correctly here, and I had to actually push these pieces in to get this to line up. Now, as long as this is cut to the correct shape, you're good. If it's not cut to the correct shape, you're going to find out real quick, but this does slide evenly all the way up and all the way down. I don't feel the force changing as I go up or down, so I'm pretty sure they did cut that correctly. Uh, JG Aurora, one way you could fix that is to have a frame brace in here. So um, I don't even know if you can do that. Maybe move the power supply forward. You have all this space up here so that you can put a piece of rail on the inside of this frame going across. Um, or make this frame tall enough that you can have a piece of this rail on the bottom here. Something to rigiditize the shape of this frame here. Because most likely this, this shell, this stamped steel shell, was not quite the right angle. And this just forced it to be at the correct angle. So it's okay, but I would like to see that to be a little more rigid. Uh, otherwise, I will continue assembly and we will go from there. Don't forget to... Put your hot end assembly on before you assemble the X-arm. If you do like I did and you forget that, you can loosen these hammer nuts, you can pull this out, slide this up, and then you can put the hot end assembly on and then slide it back over and retighten the hammer nuts. That's one advantage. The, these screws here are exposed. These you cannot mess with after you put it on, but these you can get to with it on the printer. So that worked out well enough. And then that nice little pop break there actually looks pretty nice. I mean, it's just a cosmetic thing, but I like it. It makes it look nice. It's a nice finishing touch, and they should be proud of their machines when they do that. Okay, you're also going to want to put the belt on before you slide your hot end unit in place. Let me give you a better view of that. Um, the belt is pre-cut and pre-made. You pop your two ends on here. And then um, you loosen this, get the belt on, then you tighten that snug and turn your hammer nuts to tighten it up. That's not a problem. There's a hold down here, I'm guessing for the wiring harness. The problem is, it's really low. Uh, I guess that, actually, I guess that is okay. I will use that hold down. It's made for just the wires, not the PTFE tube. So that actually does make sense. So I will use the hold down, because that will keep this from being strained, which is a good thing. Um, your filament sensor goes on the end. You disassemble your feeder unit and reassemble it back onto the printer. I ended up using the twist tie that came with the C13 power cable. Uh, you can't see me there, wrong camera. I ended up using the C13 power cable that came with the, uh, or the twist tie that came with it. And there's two holes up here. I'm using those to hold this here. So that keeps it from drooping down and getting in the way and being a problem. So that works out nicely. These two connections you see right down here, those are going to be the connections for your spool holder, which we will install next. So that's going to install like that. Um, you're probably going to want to have the wires on this side of the spool holder. So have them come around like this so they don't get jammed up in the spool itself as it unspools. So in the future, I would have liked to have seen the hole for these wires be behind the mount point of the spool so you don't have this crossover problem. Not a huge deal, but I would have liked to have seen that. So I would like to have seen this over here and this over here. Not a big deal, just you know, something pointing out. Otherwise, I think we're about ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna put the spool holder on and power it up and see what happens. Actually, I can turn that. Alrighty, first power up, everything turned on, thermistors are working, bed is heating up. I did an eyeball bed leveling. I'm now gonna print a my bed leveling Marvin. 
I find that the filament coming from underneath appears to be a little bit better of a filament, the filament path, so from underneath. Um, make sure you have the filament switch installed the correct way. It does need to be facing down, not up. Otherwise, it won't go through the hole. <laughs> yeah, filament's in. We are just now waiting for the printer to heat up, and we shall see what happens. So, stay tuned. Right, some close-ups of the array of prints that I made with the JG Maker Magic. So first up, of course, was the Marvin. I have zero complaints. He came out fine. The eye hook was a little weak, but that's down to settings. This was actually running under extrusion multiplier of 0.96, and they are slightly under extruded. So the JG Maker is probably correctly calibrated. I believe a 1.0 would be about perfect. You can actually see that on this print, how the layers are not quite attached. You see that small line? That's because I'm under extruding. Most of these printers are calibrated wrong and they're over extruding, while this one appears to be spot on. So my correction to under extrude to get correct is actually under extruding. <laughs> so um, I'll have to change that to 1.0. These are all files that I did not slice for the JG Magic. These are just my standard G code that I copied to every single printer I get. You can see this is Atomic Filaments Ultra Orange UV Reactive. Really nice. You can see that print has nice glisten when the light hits it right there. Nice clean layer alignment. Okay. The Benchy, your classic benchmark, came out about as good as you could expect. I am really impressed. No stringy either. I mean, that's a clean Benchy. No salmon skin. No weirdness. The stack came out good. First layer came out perfect. You can, can you read it on the back? Uh, yeah, you can see some of the letters. I see the hashtag, I see 3D. Not perfect, but the back is almost readable. It's a little hard with the shiny copper filament. You want more of a matte filament to make that easier to read. The bow is good. No heating issues, no cooling issues. Good job, that's a good Benchy. Inside, the bridging looks good. Tops of the arches look good. Frames around the window look good. And this is unoptimized G-code. You can even see the zipper line, which I left exposed on purpose. is very mild. It's barely visible right there. Good job. This is way under extruded. I have to re-slice this file. Not enough top layers. Because I changed the layer height to 0.12 to get the better... Um, details in the top and I did not increase the number of layers you need to so if you go from point two to point one you really want to increase your top layer from three to five or six but otherwise very clean print no complaints all the letters are legible your standard rose fear girl vase and is it yep it's watertight just put it in your mouth and try blowing. You'll feel right away if the pressure is not holding. And you'll know if it's watertight, so that will hold water. That's a testament to both the printer and the filament. This is uh, Everyone um, Silk Copper. Very nice filament. And this one was uh, Atomic Filament Ultra UV Orange. The Flexi Rex printed absolutely perfectly. Again, slightly under extruded. That's down to my slice, not the printer. It did exactly what I told it to do. All the links work perfectly. I did not have to work it or free anything up. It worked right off the print bed. I also printed my Vern style rocket that I stretch out. This is a max height, 250 millimeter tall print. So that is your maximum build height for the printer. Actually, I think I can go a little higher. I think I could probably get 260, maybe 265 out of it. But very nice. No issues. You can see I got a nice sheen on that fin there. All three give you a nice sheen. This is actually a, a good part of the model to test for that because it's a perfectly flat surface on three different, um, what do you call that, azimuth on a printer, three different directions. So it's a good indicator if you have a coupling issue between X and Y or a vibration. But yeah, very nice. I'm very pleased. Nice and straight all the way up. No cooling issues. The cooling was spot on. My nose cone that I make for my rockets. So this is my standard T300 nose cone. The body tube that we use, the 4-inch body tube is called a T300. 
and this will fit the T300 body tube, which is the most common tube that I use for all my camera rockets. Very nice. Nice clean zipper line. I could probably tune it to reduce that a little bit. But I don't feel the need. I'm pleased with that. The bridging worked well. Infill's clean. And lastly, Maxter or Mikester, Maxter. Um, I'll try to find a link for him. I'll post a Gumroad link. But he has these pens he released that you can print out. So what it is, I print two. I print one in orange and I print one in copper and then I swap parts so that you have the nice contrasting color. And this is a bolt action pen. Everything here is 3D printed. Nothing is glued except for one thing. You have a bolt, an M38, that you line this up with the hole there. You screw the thread. You thread it through the plastic. It comes out this side and then you screw the printed little ball knob onto the end of the screw. That's the only non-3D printed part, otherwise everything threads together. So this is all threaded. It uses a G2, Pilot G2 refill. And it is a bolt action pen. So the pen works. Not bad. I am really happy with that. Also the just right 1.0 millimeter pen, if you stick a half piece of like a cut it lengthwise, or use a toothpick, stick a piece of maybe 10 millimeters long, adjust the length to your taste, into the end of the pen refill, and the Just Right from Dollar Tree. See, I got a little piece of filament sticking in there? Because it's just a little shorter than the G2. So that little bit there, that's maybe, y'all want to say that's 10 millimeters? No, that's not even 10 millimeters. That's going to be like 6 or 7 millimeters. So call it 5 to 7 millimeters. You'll have to judge the length as you test it. Basically, make it longer, then you can trim it down if it doesn't fit right. And now, that pen insert works from Dollar Tree. And those are four for a dollar, so not bad. Those are really cool pens. I'm going to be featuring these in a video all by themselves. I'm going to make a whole bunch of them. Because <laughs> they're a fast print, too. Even even printing all the extra parts, it only takes like an hour and 50 minutes. So if I, find, if I fine tune it down to just the parts I need, it will go even faster. So I am very, very pleased with that. And that is it. That is the JG Maker Magic from JG Aurora, and I am very pleased with it. It's not a bad machine. My only complaint is the fans. They're noisy. Ooh, boy, are they noisy. Those things need to be quieted up. So I'll be, the printer works well enough that I, I'm going to deem it worthy of being upgraded. So I'm going to replace the fans in that printer at some point in the future to make it a little quieter because I like it. That's it. I will see you guys later. See you in the next video.